We have no items that are too late to the agenda. So we'll move on with correspondence and presentation. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the, the uh, public comments. No one has said that they want to make a Okay, they're being willing to be provided this time, but we move on to the next item. Starting off with the uh, decision 2221, minutes of the January 19 uh, last month meeting. And this is just the minutes of the January 19, 2022 meeting of the House Okay, to move and second all in favor say aye. 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 All those say nay. Okay, this point two is that two that one is three. Uh, moving along to consent items, there are none today, so uh, into unfinished business, which I think is also none. Mm -hmm. So we'll go new business. Oh, oh, it is not probably like So so, uh, I'm going to do the decision here 22 2 2 Smart Net Renewal. Rich, you want to make a presentation on that? Good afternoon, board members. I got the next three items as far as the decision on the Smart Net Renewal. This is an annual renewal that we perform every year for licensing purposes. So, um, this is what I'm Good afternoon, board members. I've got the next three decision items. The first one is smart air renewal. It has to do with the licensing for smart air and school devices, and we do this on an annual basis. What makes this um, a good thing is because it is reimbursable via rebates, so the federal government has to subsidize our funds. I think the batteries are probably dying. Okay. Well, out. No, I'm going to borrow your mic. Sorry, y'all. We're aiming for seven. We are working towards that. Although that one was turned off, so we'll see how long it those batteries last. I'll start now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is good about this is that it is government subsidized part of the and then we had a uh, RFP process, and what we would like to do is we'll see. Yeah. 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 I think we that's two. Probably I could not one other one. Yeah, I spent so much time thinking that other way. I'm not going to start over again. <laughs> so the uh, uh, smart grid is real. Uh, the D rate uh, subsidized, and then we had an RFP process and cross connect with the ring there. We also did a film for my film that comes before the board asking your approval that we select the uh, new crew cross connect at the ring and the first point that we do. And for those who don't know this, this is the we have to be paid for by the government. I move that the Pikes Library District Board proceed approve the smart net renewal of the new one for this. Second. Second. Uh, so, um, when you were talking about the maintenance package, that like MSP that's coming in and managing that, or what is the what what is the maintenance package? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's in. For us, it's a straight license renewal. We're responsible, and license takes care of it. So it's just uh, again, it's just a sort of licensing for it, and that's all it does. We have no what I would call management provision as far as the staff is concerned, because we're taking care of everything. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, we'll move that. 
All right, decision 22-3, technology request for a So we have a situation where we needed to replace 140 online computers. This does a, a couple of things. It standardizes the computers across the district. So there's a situation uh, that we have some non-standard computers. The issue that we have is uh, what you'll want to achieve is common patient experience at each one of the libraries. So that there's not different services. So, from my perspective, it's also an equity issue. So, we're trying to uh, replace these computers. We had come before the board last July, got approval to get them approved, uh, replaced. However, since then, when we went into execution in the December timeframe, there was a price change, schedule change, as far as the standard value contract that we were using as a result. And there was also a requirement change on our part. Um, to make it uh, easier for our team to deploy. So based on all those changes, it feels like a $19,000 increase as far as the overall cost of, to get those computers replaced. So I come back to board of board to ask that you approve the increase so that we can go forward with the project. It's about 140 computers though, right? Yes. Do I hear a motion? I'll move that we accept uh, that the Pike Peak Library District Board of Trustees approve the uh, technology request for patient and community experience. Okay, we can move the second. Mr. President? Sorry, I just have one question. <laughs> um, so, um, question that I have number one is in the, the document you provided to for us. Um, it talked about the requirements changed in between when the initial order was. So could you explain what those requirements were? The change. So when we deploy the computer, the computer has to be imaged. So it takes time for my team to go ahead and do that imaging. And um, as I mentioned during the orientation last week, uh, we've got a lot of things going on. So when we start busting up the schedule with the five folks that I've asked to do 140 images, plus all the projects, other projects we got scheduled. The uh, end user service manager asked for the option to have a manufacturer image the computers before they show up so that all we would then have to do is deploy them. So that was a requirement change. The other changes were just cost changes uh, as far as the supply chain, supply demand type situation. Uh, second question I had is with these, are there additional peripherals that we need to purchase? I know this covered, it said it covered the uh, computers and I believe it covered monitors as well. Are there additional uh, peripherals? No, keyboard things. Yeah, they, 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 they usually come with a package as far as the standard that you would get on a desktop computer. On a desktop computer. So, okay, I didn't know if there were additional pieces in there. No. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I do have a question. Oh, no, no. It's good to be informed about what's going on. You know, we're fully transparent. So I recommend before we have a motion and second. Dr. Stoll, I have a question. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Oh, Scott, yeah. Okay, so you're asking us to approve 126,259, which is the 19,167 increase over what we already proved last year or earlier this year of 10792. Yeah, that was correct. Okay. So we're, we're, we are reapproving the cost of 126,259. Okay. That's correct. Okay, there's no change to what we're trying to do here. So the motion phase and second phase, so all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say We have a five year sustainment cycle in which we have to replace our switches. So we estimate about 20 per year. Um, so this is just cost of new business, end of our life. So um, we need to go ahead and go forward. Um, we set out an RFP. There's only four companies submitted bids, but only one of them was compliant with all our requirements. So for the financial guidelines, we also do a check to make sure that their bid is in line with they were the only bid. So um, 
we'd like to recommend that the last technology be selected at the moon vendors for that RFP to replace the switches and pops on a durable um, power supply system for this year. We'll be coming back next year for the other 25 year cycles. Um, we have tried uh, before. We've tried other approaches to try to reduce the cost of the grid as best we can from legal favor uh, restrictions we couldn't do that because the industry is moving to uh, subscription models, systems as a service type situation. So we pursue that in a more easy way than excellent candidates for that uh, reduced cost of ownership. So that's what we're all trying to do is what's good for the uh, green grid stewardship uh, system uh, tax dollars. In terms of how that interface is in favor, um, the issue we're going to end moving forward is a lot of technology companies, a lot of companies are switching to, to you know, use the software as a service and pay subscriptions. Now it's actually hard for a purchase to install a, 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 a subscription to it and it's replaced. There was something that we looked at last year that was a state district an insane amount of money if we didn't able to do it over the life cycle. Unfortunately, paper does not allow us to do that because it treats things like that as a lease. And when it's a lease, you have to have all the money up front. Um, this is one of the unintended consequences, or both unintended consequences of paper, um, but it is something that's going to be affecting more and more businesses or more and more government agencies down the road. When we talk about sustainable life cycle, we're planning for five years, but I'm trying to get into a situation where, you, depending on when you clear the equipment, the stuff you bring in year five may not be interoperable, compatible with stuff you brought in in year one. And we have to take care of all of that. So that, that puts a tremendous uh, burden on my staff to do that because they have to know key systems when they get Any other questions or comments? Uh, I do have. Oh, go ahead, Scott. No. You're the new person, so go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, just a clarification on the, the finance policy. So, in this situation, we only had one you know, compliant response to the RFP. We had to treat it as though we only had one. It, as long as they meet certain other tests, it does, it does pass. And unfortunately, that's kind of something that happens very often in the library world, where there might only be two or three vendors for, sure. for something specific. Of course, we'll move on that, that, that's not the case. Um, but we, we have pretty rigorous financial guidelines that do explain. We always strive for three to end with at least three bids. Mm -hmm. It's not always possible. And so we, we do certain tests against it to, to make sure that we're being as frugal and, and as careful with the tax dollars. In this case, we had more responsibility, didn't we? Bill, we were in our expectations. And I will, we're seeing that more. I mean, not non responsive bids, bids that leave information out. Um, I don't know what's happening, but a lot of vendors are just getting sloppy. I don't know if school districts are running into the same thing, but it, it's happening quite a bit now. And in this particular case, since it is tied to the federal e rate program, we have to make sure our keys are crossed and our eyes are dotted. So we're very specific um, to make sure that there's no potential problem with that program. Yeah, we just uh, in this case it's not even. I mean, this is this doesn't even follow our financial guidelines. This has to actually suffice for the federal government and um, and, and which are very onerous. Um, so another sorry follow up question. Um, outside of policy is when if with regards to the RFPs that came in that were non compliant, was that non compliant with the RFP guidelines or was that not compliant with the what their proposal was did not align with our system. The their proposal did not align with our requirements for the RFP. If we said we wanted X and they gave us Y or they let X out, they were eliminated. That's fine. I just want to clarify. Okay. Thank you. All right, Scott, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a I have a few questions myself. Um, so your installation if this moves forward is between July and September, has the vendor indicated any supply chain problems? And the answer that I will give is based on the fact that we will, if it's approved today, we will automatically get back to the vendor because they made their proposals of 
proposal based on the information that was available there at that time. So we'll notify them that they were the training vendor. At that point, we we'll, may find that there are any supply issues at that time. It's one of those things that we cannot predict for the future. Okay. Um, the other question I have is, is that this is only for 22 switches and 10 UPS devices. Um, I'm assuming that of the other items that are still um, outlined, the 104 switches and 50 UPS, that we're going to have another proposal possibly next year for some of these digital components? Yes, that's correct. We're, we're expecting this every year. We so, are. Okay. We're Trust me, from a team perspective, it's a lot of work for my team to do an RFP. Um, and it takes them away from doing their primary function. So we're, we're trying to figure out ways to streamline it, working with the state as far as trying to get a better contract put on to the uh, uh, e-rate process. But it's one of those things. We think that doing that investment up front is going to save us at the end because it is very, very uh, time consuming. And um, the fact that it's tied to the e rate program, if, uh, if something came up in the cycle and we had this happen, but we had to restart because of some, some kind of issue that it just puts us behind the schedule. So we're out here right now in February and we'll find that complete in July. And um, back to your question. The E rate cycle for reimbursement starts in July, so that we've got to get all our ducks in order so that we can execute in July. And it doesn't mean we start everything in July. We have other projects, for example, the Penrose campus cabling project that we're trying to uh, improve upon. That was started, uh, supposed to start in July last year. We weren't able to get it until this year in January. And we have to have it completed by June of this year. So you can see where there is a significant amount of pressure on the uh, all these projects on my team members. So we try to face them out, schedule them out, etc. And this supply chain issue is a recent manifestation as a result of COVID and the response, et cetera. So within the last, I would say three to five months, we've been seeing it impact our overall delivery schedule somewhat. Yeah, I, it, it's, it's industry-wide. So yeah, that's why I'd asked the question if there were any contingencies or anything that the uh, vendor had stated about possible delays because of the supply chain issues. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Do I hear a motion? I move that the Okay, we move and second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. Okay, motion has been approved. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, the closure of the Palmer Lake Library last year prompted uh, some discussion between PPLB and the town of Palmer Lake as far as the lease that has been existing between PPLB and Palmer Lake since 1982 and there's really been minimal changes over the years so uh, the discussion we, we talked about uh, was uh, instituting a rent that PPLB would pay for a thousand dollars a month plus three quarters of the uh, utility costs for the building uh, over the course of the year. So uh, it did, the draft uh, lease was in your, your bid packet or your board packet and uh, went to the town council last week and was approved. And so we're here to ask your approval to enter into this agreement. Is this agreement in, in line with the other uh, places of facility? It, it, it's actually much cheaper. It is. What the heck, or gosh, that means the, the, the previous it took over 30 years. And it was, um, it was actually free. We, we did not pay to, and then we only paid uh, a quarter or a third of the utility. Paid half of the utility. So now we're paying three quarters. Um, what has happened? 
happened was the building just deteriorated. Um, and there were a few things done, but the windows were just replaced, the roof, I mean, there was a lot that needed to be done. And then when we moved out of Manatee, because of um, reasons having to do with ADA, we realized that we, it, it was not, we couldn't in good conscience just stay at Palmer Lake, which also had an 18 mile ramp. We've been working with the city for years to try to get the ramp replaced. Um, they were phenomenal to work with. It took a lot longer than, than we wanted to. But they're actually putting out an expenditure of over $100,000 of ramp, which for a city with a budget of five feet is actually a, a, a huge expenditure. So when we were negotiating with them, we agreed that we would be paying the ramp. Uh, we're paying $1,000 a month and we up the utilities from half to two quarters. Um, if the, you know, it, it's still ridiculously cheap compared to what we pay in, in, in the rest of our, in the rest of our it's essentially providing funds to the city that, that they can turn around and go yeah. back into the building, yeah. similar to our new pass. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, visiting Palmer Lake a couple of years ago, and they have had a great program. And a lot of folks rely on the library for uh, resources. And so I, I was sad to hear that they were closing down, but now it's coming back open. I know there's a lot of folks looking forward to it. Yeah, they're interested in the back. We, we heard from these folks. <laughs> oh, that, that library, it, it, it's not far from mine, it's only a few miles from my library, but it has an incredibly loyal quality and quality. Yeah, it's just a great place to be. Yeah, we're going to have to go to the library. Any other questions or comments? So, um, this was just more for me. I didn't see this in the release itself, but what it said that we were taking part of the building. What percentage of the building do we actually utilize? We, we have the, the upper level. The lower level is the uh, Palmer Lake Museum. Okay. And it's open two hours a week at that area. Yeah, yeah, it's open. That's why we're doing three quarters of the utility. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and we are looking at doing a joint um, soft reopening with them. And then what, one of the reasons that we probably just didn't come to this internal affairs committee um, because the city is kind of very last minute when, when they got it to us. So I, I, I do apologize for that. But the reason we have to have a third board meeting is we're hoping that we could actually begin operations March 1st on a, or, or around, or before the next board meeting, around March 1st, um, quietly, and then do a, a big back over the meeting. Yeah, I think March 2nd. Okay. The, March 2nd. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know, obviously, me here. Um, <laughs> so how you said there was some. Renovation type work that we've done from the perspective of one of the three windows. It's a ramp. The ramp is what we've done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They well, did the windows that you noted. Know, okay. They haven't done the windows. They did the road. Yeah. Oh, the roof. Yeah. 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 And, and it, it, it's similar to our other pieces to where we handle the interior maintenance, you know, the, the routine maintenance issues um, for, the, for the facility. And then the, the that work that's here in the exterior of the building. So, sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so, um, the three quarters, and, and, I, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to hear everything that's being said. So if I repeat anything, I, I apologize. But the three quarter monthly services for the utilities, that's just for our space, right? That does not, that's not the building, that's just our space, correct? The building uh, is metered as one unit, one building. I mean, it's basically a, a two-story house that has been converted into the library and the museum. And like John says, the museum is only open for five hours a week. Much longer. Sure. Hey, Scott, do you mind if I jump in really quick to piggyback off of that? Sure, go ahead. Um, so I guess there is the question is 75%, is that enough? Is that like, should we, should we be paying more of that if they're only open a couple hours a week? They, 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 this was actually, I think, their, that was their proposal. Before. Okay. And and I can make tell sure you that the, the museum is not paying the other 25%. Well, it, 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 sure. It, but I mean, helping out for as much as we can. I mean, that, that was the thought. I mean, we, we did part of that. So. Yeah. I was just, that, just asking the question. I mean, that's a different one. That's fine. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that that one we're not paying 
too much. <laughs> and and two that we're, we're I should just say we're just paying our share. Okay, we're, we're, but, but we shouldn't be paying too much. Um, the other question I had was this, the security deposit. Are we putting a security deposit down or are we not? The security deposit was something that they put in the lease. That um, honestly, our attorney said take it out. And that was a call on me. I'm just like, you know, it's $1,000. If $1,000 in the $39 million budget is, is not, not going to break the bank. Um, if they wanted to secure the deposit out of the bank, that was my fault. Okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that a yes, we are paying the $1,000? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It was really in the interest of not having the agent be continual back and forth between attorneys over $1,000. I got you. Okay. And I was wondering. I'm not Any further comments? Was there a motion? I move that the High Street Library District Board of Trustees receive the formula of the library building. I'll get your move and second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, motion is approved, and so it's time to take on the lease. All the way. I think one thing we can do, because um, I don't know if we've done this issue last year, um, would be a presentation maybe to one of the board meetings, because each of our leases is different um, in terms of you know what we pay for town, what we pay for building, the, and we generally do the market. But we have several that are just unusual, such as the Palm Lake lease is different. The, the agreement we have with MAC involves partnership. Um, so I think to your question, that would be if, if the board would be open to that, we can do that at a later, at a later time just to give everyone an understanding of the leases because we lease half our buildings. I also suggest that as you go around, because all of you have selected a library or are more than one, ask them that question. You know, what about your lease? Um, the, I, that'd be a good question for probably Randy and the secretary. The, the manager knows the answer, but they know the most of the staff. And most of the libraries you go to be the manager. So he would ask that question and just tell them what they know what's going on. It's just it's your thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, um, can I, uh, I would like to move a discussion item. Really quick before we leave new business, if you don't mind. I don't know what it is. Um, well, Robert Jones. So, uh, the discussion item is around the uh, mask requirement for staff across the district. I was just curious, uh, what if we could have a quick discussion about that before we move on to new business? I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. So, right now, uh, we have uh, there's a, a mask requirement for staff across the district, and so. I wanted to uh, just get some information about what the plan is to repeal that because I know there's a lot of other states. We're not currently under a mask requirement, either city, county, or state, and other states are bringing those down. So I just wanted to get some information on if there was a plan to uh, remove that. Yes, um, actually, there, there, there is a plan that we discussed with just on Monday. So what we've done in the past um, is we've always said that we will follow the CDC guidelines. And the CDC guidelines uh, right now strongly recommend wearing masks in county sites El Paso that are subject to too high or substantial transmission. Um, that is also the official policy of the El Paso County Public Health Department as well. They strongly recommend wearing it. What that would mean is that when the um, cases per 100,000 go below 50, that is when we will do high transmission. However, um, at the last uh, leadership meeting we had Monday, we did discuss this um, when we were removing the maps. And what we batted around at that point, um, so the, the, the number right now, as of today, is the uh, cases per 100,000 or 200 per. Uh, that was the number yesterday. Um, we're looking at, we, we looked at what the number was when Governor Polis removed the mask mandate last year. And it was a 200. So we are considering using that as a trigger point when it gets to 100, which we expect could be a zero. 
So that that is the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, just moving along, and I'd like to recognize the uh, we have four liaisons here for our meeting. I'd like to have them recognize and thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And who we have up here? Um, Alan, do we have uh, Commissioner Geithner, Commissioner Williams, and City Council? Yeah, okay. Great to have you on. Got Williams' pretty face up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. Reports. Friends of, friends of the Bike Street Library District. Hello, I'm Marita Jordan, president of the Friends of the Bike Street Library District. Just so you know, Monument is briskly, yeah. briskly snowing at Monument today. <laughs> Okay, should I just stay home and do it by Zoom? But I made it out. Uh, we too are excited about Connor Lake opening. That's just been we've been collecting our books there already uh, at the library. So the friends are really excited about Connor Lake opening up. Uh, we've done very well this past month. Uh, our sales have gone up, which is great because that more revenue. Our biggest item is that uh, we will have our spring book, big book sale the second weekend in March. Um, we're already getting lots of donations, lots of, I think, finally, even during the pandemic, people were cleaning out a lot. Of, and they're still cleaning out because we've been getting a lot of donations. And our sales have been so good that last year when we were struggling and hoping we would be able to give the amount of money that we usually give to the library. We were able at this last meeting to notify the foundation that we would be cutting a check. So we already have been done a $20,000 donation to the foundation. Uh, okay, Lance, the foundation report. Good afternoon. Um, so this time of year is the time of year for fundraisers to take a deep breath after um, the fourth quarter. Uh, so, so the report as as uh, submitted is maybe a little shorter than the last few have been, but uh, uh, those are the reasons um, for that. Were but in a short period of time to take the breath because library giving day is in April and 25,000 letters drop in less than a month. So um, so we will be busy here pretty soon. Um, any questions about the report? I think it's a great idea to uh, invite, collaborate with other, the Air Force Academy in this case, but could have been UCCS or college and working with us and creating these uh, survey instruments. So that is uh, yeah. that is a benefit of being a part of the uh, Give campaign. Mm -hmm. And so last year we also worked with the Air Force Academy Cadets to do a um, donor satisfaction survey. Um, and this year we are working with the cadets to gain a better understanding of the things that motivate our donors to make gifts to support the library. Um, but obviously, we need a better understanding of that than the informed messages that we can then put out in the hopes that uh, they will make their gift once again or that we get new donors. So, we're looking forward to working with them once again. That's a good point. The Air Force Academy also has done it. That, and they, uh, they solicited donations from around the country from uh, my previous uh, graduates. Right. Other folks, so. Oh, you get a chance to check that or not? Uh, I actually have known the executive director up there for quite for quite a while. So uh, we're uh, we're always in contact with our friends here in the community. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So with like Southern Hospital, for example, and the partnership there, are how is the library 
ranking is there opportunity for within the hospital system for the children that are staying? Great question. And what we have found, because we have had numerous conversations along the way, this children's hospital Colorado partnership stretches back, oh gosh, since the beginning of of water C, so back to 2014. The challenge is anytime that we either take materials or people into that environment, right? And so the every time we go down that path with them, the conversation is, oh, that's a great idea, but we would have to figure out how to sterilize the library materials or and putting those patients at risk especially under the conditions of the past two years have made that a challenge, but we're always looking for ways. Um, one of the ways that we have done it is um, Family and Children's Services has worked with Children's Hospital, and so we have done some virtual story times with them um, so that patients can, um, can in, enjoy it in that way, and, and that takes out some of those health concerns. What about the Ronald T. McDonald's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it's getting it more to the family, mm -hmm. not just the children, but really it's the family. They're the ones that are right. waiting and sitting and yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to identify that mutual benefit mm -hmm. as a sponsor and the opportunities that we give back. Mm -hmm. and, and it truly has been a partnership. Um, yeah, that's right. Really no, 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 absolutely. You're just trying to build upon yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, it's been wonderful, even pre pandemic, that, that they will provide speakers um, and provide programs for us to put, to, to put on for patrons that you know, could be as simple as how to properly apply sunscreen and stay hydrated, all the way to you know how to how to keep your children safe from common cold or influenza or Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions for Clint? Uh, Mr. Chair, I've got a quick question for Clint uh, uh, back to the airport academy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with cadets. Who are you working with uh, as far as the academy? So it's the business management majors. Oh, okay. And this, and, and, and actually, this dates all the way back to. Um, in a previous life, I worked with um, General Robert Hust, who of course was General Andy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so this is this is the lineage of all of that. I mean, perfect. Who, uh, who do you know from the foundation? Oh, um, and I was searching for his name. So Mark 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 Mark. he's the president. He's great. He's the president of both the AOG and the foundation. He can buy. I'm on the AOG board of directors, so he can buy and I work for the foundation actually. Um, we combine both the AOG and the Association of Graduates and the Edward Academy Foundation. I got to know more. The two boards are still separate. And he was at CC. Yeah. Oh. Or Billy, five times. So. <laughs> <laughs> they always do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no further questions. Thanks, Lance. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Randy. Hey everyone. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so I'll just, I apologize for this thing coming out so late. I've got a couple of sick family members at home been taken care of. So hopefully you got a chance to at least look at it a little bit. Um, our first part of our of the financial report just shows a dashboard. And looking at the cash and investment balances, and this is more for the new board members, um, that's a good picture of our cash cycle. And then, of course, um, operating revenue and expenditures, the uh, actual percentage of the budget. And then down below, there's a, a pie chart with uh, showing that, of course, personnel is our biggest expense. Our revenue for 2021 is coming in. Um, about $1.8 million higher than, than 2020. It's a 5.1% increase. 
Um, I talked about some of this in, a, in the orientation meeting that there are spe specific ownership taxes, which a lot of that's vehicles, is uh, outpacing last year by uh, about 400,000, but our, and our earnings are down about 107. Um, our specific um, categories, tax revenue and whatnot, um, our tax revenues are up year to date actual over 21 budget by um, 407,000. And um, our intergovernmental, we fell short on our federal funds. And most of what's in that actual figure is uh, uh, coronavirus relief fund money. And E-rate, we had to basically pull back on a, on a couple of projects so we didn't um, um, realize as much revenue on that as we'd expected. Um, but overall, we came in at 93% uh, of our budgeted number. And so that's almost, I mean, that's really great, I think. Our expenditures um, this year over last year, uh, we're higher by 2.7%. And I, I went into some specifics why we had some variances there. I won't go into those now for um, time savings. Um, the next page is a, is a nice uh, overview of the families of expenses. And uh, overall, actual to budget, we um, underspent our budget by 2.8 million. So that um, largely, uh, well, personnel's got some of it, but a large part of it is contractual um, services. We didn't have as much traveling as we had anticipated. Some of that's probably just coming off COVID and people just still weren't anxious to go traveling. And a lot of things didn't open up um, early in the year. Um, programming was down. Uh, we'd, we'd estimated we uh, budgeted we'd be about 414,000. We're going to come in about 188. Um, so that's, that's some of the large variances on, on the expenditures. Um, then we get down into basically our funds. Um, the special revenue fund basically this is under the just basically spending down to zero schedules are our capital funds we've got one for each of the um, regional buildings and then the capital reserve which includes facilities IT um, creative services and uh, activity in that. If you look at that particular one, you can you can kind of get a really good idea of what we're what we've got going on in the district. And it's a multi-year. All of these are multi-year funds, so basically they'll continue on for another couple of years or generally five year. And then. Um, our cash, um, we're ending with 18 point, uh, basically 19 million. And uh, we usually blow through quite a bit of cash out of Colo Trust. We're trying to pay down year end bills and uh, keep a lot of that from going into period 13. And then this, this is basically a preliminary shot at what our December is gonna look, at, look like. Um, of course, we won't have final audited um, financials until um, probably June. And we have to report those to the state by July 31st, but we're usually done by the first part of, or the latter part of June, first part of July. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, any further questions or comments? Thank you, Randy.
Thank you. Okay, public service report, John. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, I know that on Friday we had a long day, and our new board members and also some of the other uh, board members learned a lot about public services. So I hope that you did learn a lot about public service, not only public service, the whole library. So, but it's a it's a long report, but also we have a lot of pictures because we understand some people like visuals. So I was worried at the beginning. Of I know, and I, you you mentioned that Nina, so we listen. So yeah, and there are the pictures, right? So <laughs> that's great. So um, there some few things that I want to say. Also, I want to say a few words about the Palmer Lake uh, for like that we are doing the soft opening on the second. Our thoughts were before that maybe we should renovate internally as well, but the love of the library is. Such an such amazing thing in that community. We decided no, we need to open our library uh, to the community members. So that's why we're doing this soft opening. And already, uh, Jane Perry had some discussions with the museum that we want to do some sensory story times there for children with autism and their family. So we already doing the partnership there, and we're very excited about that. So, and I know that in the adult education part of the report, there was conversations about partnering and doing some presentations in different school districts. So in March, uh, we will be going to District 20. It's a family night, I believe, for immigrant families and we'll be providing information about our resources, what we have here uh, for the parents. So, and uh, I, um, also, I know it's going to be in May, but we plan ahead. So May 20th, just mark on your calendars and you will be invited as well um, later. We are going to have our food industry training graduation. So I believe it's at 10 a.m. I found out about it today. So, and more information will be forthcoming. I, I, I think we will decide. Just we do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, if students cannot make food, if we have any restrictions, then I'll make food. <laughs> so, and the other update I have is, is about Rock River Library. We had three retirements uh, that library just, oh, library just did a library, they're not going to be for yet. So, and we're going to modify some hours on Saturdays. We will be open, um, I believe, up till, up till noon on Saturdays, but we'll provide fun. Thank you. Uh, one, um, and then, but we will continue providing the curbside service there. So we hope to um, open on um, Saturdays that um, uh, normal hours, I believe sometime in maybe end of March or April, as soon as we will be able to hire people. So these are some of the updates, and if you have any questions from the report, I'll be more than happy to answer. I always review the report before because there's a lot of things happening. So. Thank you. Any comments or questions for Jenna? Uh, really? I, I was waiting for Scott. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Fiona. I appreciate that. As always, that's good support. And now moving to support services, Jeff, uh, and your folders, starting on page 46. Anyone have any comments or questions about any of those? Those reports you don't do for this or this. I have a question for you. It's interesting. I noticed that the cell phone call to the, the, the library indicates that the map is an issue, but that is a state. And all the uh, libraries that receive their fair share, but uh, a lot of them are out already. Oh, okay, we go. There's just over 100,000 of them using two thousand. I actually put that in the box. We've got a kind of shuffle around. I know we still have some here. I'm not sure what other questions have. We do encourage people. And those are distributed by security, correct? They do have a branch. 
Oh, it um, it, it doesn't count. Okay. Um, you know, so some of our branches don't have to be Okay. Yeah. Um, but so it, it, it's really worked out this way. Never for that. And I, uh, one of the things that I did mention, and I was wanting to say that now that you brought up now, uh, it was very nice that the library was able to um, collaborate with the whomever is doing COVID testing and shots or the vaccine oh, because they actually opened the library. The library we didn't do anything, but the folks that came in and and that's nice that they have things to go in that area. I know there's a lot of facilities now providing uh, home tests. Yeah, yes, there's a lot of the home testing. I know we said the PX today, and uh, I went to one of the things that are yesterday, maybe at the Peter's uh, Anyway, they're also available on, on uh, Amazon and other places. So. And if you need to find out more about that, you can go to the library and find out more about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, moving along. Choose the library and support. John? Yep. Um, I am going to be. Quick today because I know that we have closed session and I know that it's coming in front of the So uh, it's been a while since I've talked about uh, and what's happening there with the building. So it's finally looking like it's heading toward possible really moving forward. How's that for a wonderful statement to make? It's looking like it's moving towards moving forward. But if you've been a part of this process for the last six years, you know that that's actually a big step. Um, so we have uh, somewhat finalized plans. Uh, it has to go through two more rounds of community feedback. Um, the original building uh, was 2,950. Uh, but no, the original building was 33,456. So it's 2,950 of, of expansion. Um, one of the things that we are working through with the city of Manatee is what is the rent that we would be willing to pay on that? And we traditionally pay market rent on buildings such as that. Um, but we've been in negotiations with them about the fact that before that, we only paid um, $12,000 a year, around $12,000, $13,000 a year for Manitou. So um, it's going to be a, a, a bit much if you pay market rent on a building that does not see the same level of use as, for instance, a rock or a Cheyenne or a monument. So the discussions. Um, that we had have started out with an acknowledgement that we would pay market rent on the addition because that is something more than, than what we had before, but we wouldn't necessarily pay market rent on what we what what exists um, on, on the amount that we had. So the number that we're starting with is around eighty thousand dollars a year, um, and that is uh, fifteen dollars a square foot at, for the um, addition. And ten dollars a square foot for what we had prior to the expansion. The other thing that um, we are talking to the city of Manitou about regarding this is that we're still uh, the partnership that we have with Mac is extremely popular. Um, it's something that has just been a huge benefit for for both organizations. And the the more we pay in rent, the less likely to be able to sustain paying that partnership. So those conversations have started. Um, I will be bringing this to the Eternal Affairs Committee for a deeper discussion because it's reaching the point where it's going to be board and council um, instead of me and Denise. Uh, but, me, but Denise and I have started started this conversation, started this conversation. And this started with Mike um, too. So uh, Mike was involved with this one started last year. So that, that's where that is. Um, but even that is just contingent on so much um, because they still need to find the rest of the funding for the construction. They know that they need at least $2 million to get built with the ground. The entire project is expected to cost over $2 million. So there's still that gap that they have. They contracted with um, Kimberly Sherwood to do a kind of a fundraising plan, and she came up with one that was presented to the Massachusetts City Council. Um, about two or three months ago. Uh, so there's still so many balls in the air on, on what is going to happen with this project. The important thing from our perspective is that uh, we still have a presence in that and, and that the presence we have is one that is, is, is working very well on, on, on all sides. The city has requested, however, 
so that a board member um, might uh, be present at the two next um, uh, public discussions. Um, I will say, if you're looking for a good time, come to a public discussion in that. I'll um, say, oh, I'm in it. <laughs> no, you'd be awesome. To, uh, every question, just go, oh, I'm new. Right. Yeah, I guess so. So, um, but uh, it, it's not really, it, it's really there more um, than just that there's, there's this fear in the city of Madison Springs that has existed ever since they joined the district in 2013, which is the key field is being built. And so they just want someone there as a sign that you know, I, I, I've been doing this for six years at these meetings. Um, that they would like to see a board member there as well, just to show that this 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 extends all the way up to the board in terms of our commitment to the work. So you have two opportunities. <laughs> um, one is uh, these are next week. One is February twenty third. That one is live um, from six to eight, and then the other one is virtual. So you could just be on your computer, um, and it is February twenty fourth from six to eight. So it, it can be multiple of you. Um, if there's more than two of you. Um, let me know if I can give you strict instructions not to talk to each other while you're there. Um, but you know, it, 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 this would be a, a, a show of, of 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 good intent towards towards that. Um, so let me uh, and or Laura know if you're able to do it with time and taking that information. They're not expecting a formal presentation for them, but it really is just kind of showing that that, that we are committed to this. Debbie was a part of these discussions. Back in 2020, I think you'll remember this. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I, don't, I don't have any more words other than all those times. So all those times we assured yeah. you that we are committed to the, to the residents of Madison Springs. Excuse me, I can listen to this. Anyway, um, so those are the two dates. Um, there is one more uh, date. This is a little bit further out. It's March 14th. And Scott, this one might be for you. Um, or actually you are Karen, because this is in Calhoun. Um, and it is from seven to eight, and it's a, they're going to be doing a, a proclamation um, regarding the library at City Hall. So um, March 14th, seven at seven o'clock. Um, and I know we have two two board members now from, from out of that. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that I have. Um, is uh, just a reminder um, of some dates that are coming up. Uh, we have, uh, we are working um, on the visioning, mission, and values uh, exercises. That's actually already started with our management team. It's continuing with the staff next Monday as part of our in service day. And then the board and leadership team are going to take it after that. And we have three different meetings um, on March 1st uh, at three o'clock. That's during the internal affairs committee meeting. Um, and that will be, uh, it will be leadership team and the board. Um, it will probably be either here or at Library 21C. Um, we try to put these at times where we already have something going on. Um, the next one, unfortunately, though, was, uh, is not. That's March 14th. It's a Monday at 1 o'clock. Um, that is a long one. It's two and a half hours. And hopefully, as many of you as possible will be able to be there. And then the last one, I know you'll be able to be here as a new one night, March 16th, our next board meeting. Um, for that one, what we're actually looking at, because uh, we will have board stuff too, um, would be doing a board meeting at four, which is when we used to do it, but that's going to be difficult for the liaison. And then starting the visioning exercise at five, the other thing we could do is start this earlier. Um, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. We, we just don't want people to be here until eight or nine o'clock. I think uh, John asked, you can ask Wayne up there because Wayne's the chair of the building board. I think four o'clock is fine. Wayne, unless we've got, you know, we're going to be over uh, later than four o'clock. And this is new to the two of you, so I'm not even sure four o'clock would work for the two of you. Uh, with this notice, I could probably. Because what we could do then is we could have an hour board meeting 
and then start at five and be done by seven thirty. So that we're not here for ever. I know you missed the board meeting. Yeah. I'll talk to Wayne, but I I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that. Yes, that, that's why we actually moved to 14. Just so I'm not sure about all these And we still have a lot. We can, we can, we can figure all, all, all this out. Uh, you yeah, know, this is just, it's unusual that we have this many extra meetings, but um, this is the beginning of the planning process. And that's all I have unless there's any questions. Thank you. Okay, word report, government committee. Uh, John stole all my sites. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I have all the days. I have the same days. Um, at a, we did meet and we uh, were making sure that uh, the CEO, John's evaluation was in correct order. So that's what we reviewed. Uh, we also have started in the governance committee of uh, reviewing the bylaws. Um, <laughs> uh, and we're looking more for typos, clarification of language, et cetera, in the governance committee, and then we'll bring it forward. I believe John uh, had said that uh, we're also going to the communications department has come up with a new style guide for everything that's printed and and uh, so they, it will go through them as well, but it always goes through the attorney to make sure that we're on the right path. Um, uh, also, we uh, we talked uh, about and I on uh, at the orientation we talked about adopting the trustee. So if you guys will be signing that up, and then Laura will get that scheduled to us. And I have a question on that, Laura. In the past. Uh, that was scheduled for, we went through, uh, and you will do that scheduling for us. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and those details will come forward. Um, and of course, we finalized the orientation that we had. And that was, I thought it was very successful. I learned a lot more the second time around. It is a big whirlwind. And of course, we've always, uh, uh, John updated us on what was happening with COVID and the mask, et cetera. And we will be setting a date for uh, an open house for Wayne as he has moved on from our board. And that was our discussion. Thank you, Laura. Okay, uh, Charles Barrett, please. Um, we did meet, and you've already voted on everything that we did tonight, so. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we did a great job. <laughs> hey, public service committee. And actually, um, public affairs did meet, um, but there was a follow-up meeting that I wasn't able to attend. So, um, yes. About the ballot language that we started to draft. So I don't know if Michelle is on. Um, so at the uh, at the meeting, uh, we discussed uh, having another meeting uh, around ballot language. And a lot of the discussion about ballot language was coming up with the various um, well, basically what we would use. Use the money for it if, if, if you would get it. Um, you know, it, it's something that uh, we go in for a tax increase, we should actually be able to explain to the public, of course, this, this is where the money would go. It was not difficult for us to come up with it with something we know innately that we, that, 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 that we do every year. Every, every time we do the question, we don't like to think that we can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but this was also going to be used uh, for the polling that will be done in March. Um, and, and that contract has been signed. Um, it's going to be a similar poll to the one that, that we did before. Um, you know, we can hope that the results are as good as they were before, uh, as good as they are, that we're in very good shape. Um, that is information that we can share with, with each of you um, in terms of the results of a, of a previous poll that we did. And, and, and we can get that information to you. Um, 
but it, it didn't just cover, I mean, you know, the, the going for potential tax increase, of course, was not the only question on this. Um, it looked at what, what the, you know, the, the, the feelings are towards the taxi by the district. You probably won't be surprised that um, we scored extremely well in terms of <laughs> in terms of how the public thinks of us. But then it looked at specific services and people in the area looked at it as well. Okay, I just have a couple things here on the board, on the board president report. First of all, I'd just like to welcome uh, both parents. We have new trustees and straight to have you on board. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things going on. And one thing that's important to understand is that virtually everything that we look at to vote on in this committee is looked at ahead of time by the various functional committees that look at these things, provide information and requests and comments and things for us so we know what's going on. So it's it's the first thing everything look at at least one. And so it's not like we just kind of well, do this. The first time you hear about it is here in this meeting, that's not the case, so, so you know. Anyway, there's a lot going on. And the thing that uh, that uh, Laura's going to do for us is give us a schedule, I guess, in a sense. It's a list of uh, organizations and facilities that we have a chance to visit to learn more about what this library does, how it works, and the managers that run those facilities and those act activities. So it's a good learning experience. I, I welcome you. To uh, take a look, and you can probably schedule the best time for you to go to those places, and uh, they'll be happy to see you. So, be happy to tell you about what they do and what's very important. So, that being uh, all I have to say, I'd like to now close this in to move into an executive session. So, we'll this is, uh, can we pause for five minutes so that we can clear the room? Right. So, it's now six, six, uh, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah, I, I assume the liaison is drawing, but so I, I know you're gonna when you're done and you open back up, we are gonna have some open comments, but I won't I don't think I'll well if, 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 are you wanting to allow a little time for your last thing comments or no 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 I was saying if, if all you're gonna do is wait one minute sorry but one minute is allowing it's basically voting on the results all right Okay, so we'll take a five minute break before uh, we get the people's input. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 
Just a bunch of cows out here. <laughs> if if you're asking me if I decorate for Valentine's, no. <laughs> I didn't even know that was on there to be honest with you. Yeah, you record it. I think we're supposed to. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Supposed yeah. We're, we're supposed to record this yeah. um, when we're in a bigger okay. session, but then it, it's, it's you only have to have it for like 30 days or something like that. Um, but it is recorded. Oh, so, she might have yeah, she yeah, so I wasn't, I didn't have time to do that. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you do about. I was going to. Do we want to go after? Yeah, we don't have a here. I don't know if I can see if it was stopped. I didn't know if you just wanted to stop and start. What's the question? Uh, if they stopped and started, restarted the recording, so we have a separate. Oh, yeah, meeting. yeah, that yeah. we should do that. Yeah. The question was, did that happen? My guess is no. No, it did not. It's not recording. So. It says oh, record. No, it's under the board of trustees account, or it's under a different account. Because you're, I think you're at the lectern account. I think board of oh, I see. Is recording because it's yeah. still recording up at the top left. That means I just don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but I don't either. So I think that's the problem. It's all my fault. <clears throat> Thanks, God. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So I think we just have to make sure we don't right. have to have records, but right. we don't have to. It doesn't. It's not an open session for anybody. Right. That's right. what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 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 yeah, it's going to be, you know, you can take a session, well, you're supposed to read whatever statute is and allow us to. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, I'm supposed to be 